Ah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And oh my goodness, me, we've had some incredible problems in the last half hour. YouTube has gone crazy. And um, we don't know why our video didn't show up. It didn't show up in the listings. It didn't show up. My, um, what's the word I'm looking for? My community post didn't show up. All of these things didn't show up. We've no idea, but here we are. We're live and we're going to do our film music evening. So rather than start with a piece of music, we're going to start with a little bit of chat until people hopefully find, we're, find out we're here. Um, ah, here we go. People are joining us now in the chat. Thank you so much. My goodness me. What a weird... We've spent the last 20 minutes. Where I didn't have time to get changed. I'm still wearing my... I'm not wearing any fancy socks. Um, barely had time to uh, get myself something to drink. Mm. Everything else has been working perfectly. The organ is working perfectly. Everything's working fine. But for some reason, we, for some reason YouTube isn't working. My mum actually spotted it and sent us a, a WhatsApp message and said, no concert tonight. And uh, yes, very, very confusing indeed. We have no idea what happened, but everything is here. Even the, um, when we started it, even the wrong image was there. It used the image from yesterday's concert. Absolutely no idea what's going on. So I need 10 minutes to sort of calm down and then we can get going with the concert. This is the joys of live television, as it were. Um, Things can go completely crazy. Things, sometimes things work, sometimes things don't work. For some reason it didn't work today. I have no idea what's going on. So, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming. Let's wait and see. Well, we're up to 74, 75 people in the chat. Um, if you're able to, then join us in the chat. If you have your Gmail or Google account, you can join us in the chat. You can say hi. If we have some new people, um, it would be great to say hi. There were some new people last night in the chat, so I hope these new people are back. Be nice to them, the new people in the, um, in the Garcho gang. You're lovely to everybody anyway, but it would be great to have lots of new people. Wouldn't that be exciting? Um, yeah. <sighs> so, what happened? Do we know what happened? Mrs. Garcho, do we know what happened? Okay, yeah, we don't know, do we? With YouTube. We have no idea what happened with YouTube. Something bizarre happened. <sighs> but here we are. Right. Time to start. Now, tonight's, tonight's extravaganza is going to be film music. And I've got all sorts of goodies. I blame any technical difficulty on the lemon tree spiders. Matt, what are lemon tree spiders? Well, the spiders on our lemon tree outside. <gasps> Talking of spiders. Oh, can I tell the story about the spider? Oh. You know, at this time of, it's this time of year, sort of, as it becomes autumn, at least if you're based in Europe or these um, latitudes, shall we say, my mum knows what's coming now. Um, it's that time of year and the house spiders decide to come out and look for a partner again, you know? And in Europe, these are the largest spiders you can get in Europe, you know, these, these big things like that. And um, we haven't seen them this year. We've, I think we've seen one this year in the garage of all places. And it was hiding in the corner where I've got an old car battery and a few sort of Christmas decorations, I think. It was hiding there and it came out to say hello and it immediately got sucked up by the hoover. Not me. Uh, immediately got sucked up by the hoover. But was it two nights ago or three nights ago? Um, quite it was two nights ago. Vanessa was recording a message for um, a friend. She was recording a WhatsApp message for a friend. And all of a sudden she went silent. And when, it, when Vanessa goes silent, it can only mean one thing, spider. And she sort of came running over to me and sort of went, made those sort of faces and pointed. And I had to go and see this thing. Well, I'm not scared of spiders, but oh my God, I've seen big European house spiders in my time. But this one, oh my God, this one was enormous. It was absolutely enormous. Um, and normally what I do is I get a glass and I, you know, get them in a glass and put them outside. They, um, they shouldn't go outside because they die outside, but certain people don't like them in the house. So this one was going to get caught and it was going to be put outside. However, it wouldn't fit in the glass. The glass wouldn't fit round it. That's how big it was. So um, sadly, it ended up in the Hoover as well. So I suppose that's, we're paying for that tonight, for, for um, hoovering up spiders. And that's the end of that. But yes, this was a monster. So anyway, yes. so it wasn't a lemon tree spider. It was definitely a garage spider. 
one of those big buggers you get out in the garage. Right, huh. I think I have calmed down enough to carry on or to start our concert. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Tonight is night two of our week of organ festival goodies. And tonight we are going to celebrate the wonderful world of film music. I have got music by the following composers, and I'll probably miss out some. We've got Elmer Bernstein, of course we've got Elmer Bernstein. We've got Enrico Morricone, of course we've got Enrico Morricone. We've got John Williams, oh my goodness, you have to have John Williams. We've got Hans Zimmer, Psh, don't tell anyone. We've got Hans Zimmer. We've got a guy called Max Steiner. Ever heard of Max Steiner? Me neither. Uh, we've got Max Steiner. We've got John Barry. Of course we've got John Barry. We've got all sorts of things. So it's very exciting. Now, here we go. Let's get started. I think we need to start with a bombastic piece of music. Tonight we're using the organ in Nancy Cathedral, the big French organ, the one that looks like that, or the one that looks like that, comme ça. And um, hold on, I need that, don't I? Yes. And as you can see by the number of stops we have there pulled out, oh my goodness me, oh my goodness me, it's big. Here we go with a big sound. Ladies and gentlemen, if dad's watching, he's going to love this one. You might recognize it.
The Magnificent Seven. Who can name the Magnificent Seven? Steve McQueen. Uh, there you are. <laughs> who can name the Magnificent Seven? Who were they? Steve McQueen, Yul Brynner. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Um, yeah, him. Um, Robert Duvall, wasn't it? Robert Duvall? Uh, who else was there? Who else was there? Ah! Um, I can't remember. God, old age is creeping in. Oh, my goodness me, I am going for it tonight. Yes, uh, when, when you don't have time to relax and move... Oh, hold on, what's wrong? Oh, I had a... What was that? Quizlet. I had, oh, I had a piece of fluff. I'm covered in fluff. It's an old jumper. Look at it. It's horrible. You need to shave it. My jumper needs it. I need a shave. Shave My jumper... Hmm? Shave that out. Hmm. <laughs> Vanessa wants me to take my jumper off. Oh, boy. It is a bit warm in here tonight. Yes, it's true. And my goodness, stressful time. I was going to play something else now, but I'm going to play something very gentle now. Um, and this is uh, something to calm down a little bit more. Ah, uh, Yes, yes, yes. Um, what were we talking about? Yes, oh, the Magnificent Seven. Who can remember the Magnificent Seven? Who got them? Come on. Charles Bronson, that's the one. Henry Fonda, that's it. And the others. Thank you, Uzumaya, and the others. Yes, we had Steve McQueen, uh, Yul Brynner, Charles Bronson, Henry Fonda, that's four. Uh, Doc Grumpy, Sleepy Dopey, Happy Sleepy, Sleepy and Dopey, that's two Sleepies and two Dopies. Mr. Walker, that's not correct. Uh-huh, okay. Who can remember? Who can remember? That's what, we've all got Google, haven't we? That's what Google's all about. Um, have I even, did I? Oh, I did. Yes, I did. Um... I was so organized for tonight. Everything's registered. Everything's registered. And then YouTube went and buggered everything up. Um, all good fun, nonetheless. Um, something we don't have in tonight's program yet is a piece of horror music. Now, um, you know I love spontaneous requests. And Vanessa, spontaneous requests, gang at Garcho DE. Gang at Gaucho DE. If you have spontaneous requests for some horror music, some horror film music, some real horror film music, then um, let us know and we will see if we can find it and put it in towards the end of the concert. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. Talking about horror music, how about this? This has nothing to do with that, but it's one of those pieces of music that's so nice, it really should be a spooky horror piece. You know what I mean? You might recognize it. The composer is someone called Max Steiner, who, like I said, I'd never heard of. But the piece of music is one of the most famous pieces of film music you will ever come across in the world. You will also hear it in elevators across the universe. <laughs>
theme from a summer palace. Yul Brynner, Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, Horst Buchholz, the one nobody remembers, Brad Dexter, James Cover, and of course Robert Vaughn, not Duval, Robert Vaughn. That's right. Well done, mother. My dad. <laughs> and of course, my dad knew them all. Of course he did. Well, me, at least my dad's awake. So, <laughs> so, so there's something. Uh, wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. Yes, of course. One of my dad's favorite films, Magnificent Seven. And of course, one of the best pieces of music ever. So anyway, that was theme from A Summer Place. And that was in the program to sort of just... Uh, let me sort of shake the old fat around a little bit and, you know, calm down a bit in the middle of all the difficult stuff I was going to be playing. <laughs> the difficult stuff I was going to be playing. For example, this. Some music from films is more famous than the film itself. And this is possibly the best example of that. The composer... The composer was Henry Mancini, otherwise known as Hank Mancini. And I think we all know what it's going to be. Um, I think we all know what it's going to be. Adam's Family. Oh, that's a nice idea. See if you can find the music for that. Bride of that's not a bad idea. Oh, that's also a nice idea. Also, yeah. uh, also a nice idea. Lots of nice ideas. If you can find it. Hold on a minute. I need to find... I need to find some... Oh, I didn't... Where is it? This is me being organized now and I can't find what I did earlier. Where did I put it? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take something else. Let's take... Let's take... <laughs> that's not horror. That's not horror. Well, that's coming. Glass of wine, please. Who said that was Joe that said that? Joe. That was Joe. Joe, you're right. Glass of wine, please. I think we'll take these registrations here. These sound pretty good to me. Um, and we'll not go from the... Well, we can miss out the soft ones, I suppose. Yeah, that's good. I beg, I beg your pardon? That's a good question, actually. Joe, what does Vanessa get if she brings me a glass of wine? Yeah. That's a good question. What's Vanessa's reward if I get a glass of wine? What's the management's reward if I get a glass of wine? That's a good question. Good question. I'll leave that up to you, Joe. Sort it out with Vanessa. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Someone requested it a minute ago, and here it is on the program. Henry Mancini and his most famous piece of music ever. You might recognize this. See what you think.
the Pink Panther. <laughs> Given the full organ treatment there on Non C Cathedral. What a wonderful piece of music. And like I said, I think the music is more famous than the film itself. The film itself, of course, now, while we're on the subject of my dad's favourite films, we have to include anything with Peter Sellers in it, I think. Um, um, the proper Pink Panther films, not the, not the ones that came... There was, there was a remake with Steve Martin. God, what a waste of money that was. But yes, um, the, um, the originals with Peter Sellers and the wonderful things there, absolutely madness. Um, wonderful films. Great humour, of course, and of course that wonderful soundtrack from Henry Mancini. There may be some more Henry Mancini coming later, we shall see. Let's throw that one away for now. And uh, you are joking! What? Joe? Joe? Look! Ha ha ha! Oh, my goodness, life is good. Oh, life just got better. Life just got better. Vanessa's, Vanessa's been very modest in the background, saying, aren't I just the perfect wife getting you a glass of wine? Yes, oh, look, I'm, 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 what do I do now? I've got wine and I've got water. I feel very religious. Cheers. Mm. The problem is, of course, I can't do them both there. But anyway, let's keep the wine closer. Ha <laughs> ha. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Vanessa. And thank you all. Cheers, everybody. Oh, God, that's better. <laughs> Beg your pardon? <laughs> Vanessa, I think tonight's going to be... Let's calm down and do a spontaneous night tonight. I was, this was going to be a proper, a proper full-on organised concert. I do have a proper organised programme there, but I think we're just going to calm down now and have a gacho gang night together. How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen? Ah. <sighs> Vanessa just said she went while she went down to get the glass of wine. She was early. Um, she was she was early enough that she could actually speak to the dog. And um, our dog, as you know, is called Shiloh, which is a wonderful name. But at the moment, he has a million other names other than Shiloh. I'm not going to tell you all of them. Can I tell them? Darf ich unser neuen Namen für ihn sagen und warum? Our new name, our new name for Shiloh is is Bertie. Um, we love calling him Bertie, but we actually call him Uncle Bert. And Actually, no, let, let's leave it like that. We call him Uncle Bert, or Bertie. And if anyone can work out why we might call our black Labrador Uncle Bert, or Bertie, then um, let me know in the chat and you might win something. Okay, but don't Google, only if you know. Don't cheat, no cheating, no cheating. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move back to the wonderful world of cowboy films, but this time, this time a little bit more, a little bit more modern, a little bit more modern, and we're into the world of Clint Eastwood, which means it must be Enrico Morricone. And why Enrico Morricone? Well, he was a, uh, what did I save this as? Oh, I know. I saved this with three letters. G-B-U. There it is. Um, Enrico Morricone. Italian composer. Why would an Italian composer be writing music for Western films? The simple answer is spaghetti westerns. Why were they called spaghetti westerns? Because they were all filmed in the south of Italy. That's that. Now, where does it turn to that? Yeah. That's a good question, actually. Ah, there's where it changes to that. And then it does something there. Okay, and then it, oh my God, there's something even bigger there. And even bigger, and even, that's, is that true? Well, that's what, I, that's what I registered before, so it must be correct. Yes, that looks all right. Let's work it out now. You might recognize this. Clint Eastwood in a flat hat and a poncho with a cigar or a little black cigarette. A bigger pardon? Nobody knows why he's called Uncle Bert or Bertie. Well, you work it out. Let's see if you can work it out. This one, I think you will probably recognize. Get your whistling positions ready and you know what to do.
The good, the bad, and the ugly. People don't know. Nobody knows about Uncle Bert. It, Cameron Platt's got it almost right when he said something about a grey beard. Well, let's change it. Let's not say grey beard. Let's say silver back. That's a bit obvious. Silver, silver back. That's easy. That's easy. That's easy. I'm sure you'll be able to work it out. Now, while we're on the subject of uh, Morricone, Enrico Morricone composed lots of rather lovely film music as well, not just cowboy style music. He also composed a lot of sort of lovely, dare I say, slushy music. And this is a favorite. And anyone, <laughs> anyone who knows, and well, that's good. It's one registration. All right, it's one registration. Anyone who um, watches the, or watched, they've stopped now, but I watched the live streams of Gert van Hoof from um, the Netherlands. Um, this was one of Gert's favorites. He played this a lot. Mm. And it is a lovely piece of music. And I've never played it before. I only dug it out for this concert tonight. And I rather like it. Very simple, very cute, very nice. And it's quite simply called Gabriel's Oboe. At least that's what the music's called. It's from the film The Mission. Bet you didn't know that. Isn't that a simple but lovely little melody? It's so simple, it doesn't, it, it doesn't move very much beyond those sort of four or five notes. 
very clever what you can do with not many notes at all. Um, I remember when I studied music and we talked about composing melodies, there was sort of the, there's two ways of composing a melody, you know, we're talking sort of melody melodies, you know, nice melodies. I don't like the word nice, but you know what I mean. And um, if, you're in, if your piece is in D major, then you've got, you know, your melody can either be between D and D or between A and A. And this is exactly that piece. It, it doesn't really, it goes, once it goes up to a B, but otherwise it stays there between an A and an A the whole time. So between the fifth and the fifth. And you will find, if you analyze the sort of the most popular melodies of all time, you will find that I think 90% of them follow that rule. Um, um, exceptions to those rules are people like Cole Porter, who composed many, many wonderful melodies that are so complicated. Um, they stick in your mind, but simple melodies that stick in your mind are usually that sort of stuck in an octave kind of melody. So there you are, another piece of useless information you didn't need to know. Thank you very much, Mrs. Garchow. Now then, I've got lots of books and pieces of goodies here. I even actually have a proper book of music as well, which we'll be coming to later. Now, that is a piece of music that we're doing later. I'm going to change the order of events a little bit. We're going to work around these things now. What's next? I think... No, we'll do that later as well. That's, that's, that's too well... No, oh, here's... Ah, let's do this. This is not well known. Um, that's a good question. Vanessa's not going to tell you what's coming tonight. You've got to hang nee, around to see. Ahnung. Vanessa doesn't know either, because Vanessa has nothing to do. Vanessa has nothing to do with the putting together of the program as such. Um, here's a piece of music that I guarantee none of you know, and I didn't know it either. It's obviously French. It's by a composer called Georges Delerue, um, not Delarue, Delerue, George Delerue, uh, and it's from a film called Comme un boomerang, like a boomerang which I have no idea what it's about. I'm not into French films, I must admit. Um, and it's a piece of music called La Melancolie. So obviously not the happiest, cheeriest piece of music, but it fits in the program. It fits on this registration as well. Um, this was sent to me yesterday, or was it this morning? I can't remember. It may have been sent to me this morning. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's a very French kind of piece of music, but it's a very... Again, a simple piece of music. Now, let's see if you can work out where the melody lies in this one. It's, if I give the game away, I would say it's exactly the same as the last one. Um, let's see if you can work it out. It's one of those melodies that doesn't do very much, but at the same time sets up a rather, sets up a rather nice sort of scene. And that's the idea. So get in a melancholy mood, everybody, and let's have a bit of melancholy music.
Hello. Sorry, um, technical difficulties with the microphone apparently. Let's make sure it's plugged in properly. Um, La Melancholie. It's plugged in. It's doing its thing. It looks all right. Uh, I shall put it somewhere else. Melancholy. That was very melancholic, wasn't it? But nice, nonetheless. And what made that melancholic? Simple semitone movements. And for Graham, the circle of fifth. I saw that. Joe says I should drink my wine before it gets warm. That's a good idea. But if I drink it too quickly, I'll be and having fun at the organ when I should be concentrating. All right, nobody got Uncle Bert yet, so nobody got the silver no. back. Nobody got it? No. Nobody got nobody. it. Oh, thank you very much. Andrew, Andrew is buying a festival ticket. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, yes, if you want to help us out by buying festival tickets, then we are very grateful indeed. That would be wonderful of you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, last night, a few people bought some festival tickets when they were here, and that was very kind of you. Thank you. So, yes, if you want to help us out and, um, and uh, help us through the week, as it were, um, then getting hold of a festival concert ticket would be very kind of you. Um, some people asked, would it, would it be all right if I bought a ticket for the week? And yes, of course it would. That would be absolutely fine indeed. So um, we've got six concerts this week. So, you know, whatever you think is suitable, whatever you think. But thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for anything. A simple thumbs up and a hit of the subscribe button, if you haven't already, is more than enough. Mm. Here? Mm. That's got nothing to do with that. Yeah. Oh, apparently we have some audio issues this evening. That's weird. We shouldn't have could of course be something to do with the is it plugged yeah. into the camera properly Matt leach, Shiloh Matt leach said we should show we've got a picture of shiloh mm. we have a picture of shiloh here oh, ready oh, oh, are you ready for this here is this is uncle bertie there he is look at that that was last year that's exactly a year ago actually well pretty much exactly a year ago on his birthday on uh, uh, coming Friday, that's the 7th of October, and the coming Friday, it's his birthday. He will be 12. Um, a very young Labrador. He's going to be 12. And that's true, actually. Uh, um, in next Friday's uh, live stream, we're going to do a little doggy video for you. We're going to take him, we're going to take him to a little trip to a pet store, and he's going to pick out his own toy. Um, so there you are. So we're going to have um, we're going to have a nice little doggy evening next Friday night to say happy birthday to Shiloh, or as he's known at the moment, Uncle Bert. Nobody got Uncle Bert. Oh dear. Right. Remember the film Gorillas in the Mist. Sigourney Weaver playing what was her name? Diane Fossey. Diane Fossey, the the American um, um, nat um, nature or conservationist or whatever she was, who went to. Was it Rwanda? Yes, it was Rwanda, wasn't Rwanda. it? It went to Rwanda to save the gorillas. And she befriended families of gorillas. And one of them was called Uncle Bert. Um, and um, because Uncle Bert was the, sort of the boss of all the gorillas that Diane Fossey had, um, Uncle Bert, then we decided that that's a perfect name for Shiloh because he's basically our boss. He's the boss of the pack here. He tells us what to do. So we've started, call, we've started calling him Uncle Bert. Or just Bertie. Um, because Bertie suits him as well. Bertie is a very royal name and it suits him perfectly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for years. For years, people have been requesting the music from Interstellar. Interstellar is, of course, a wonderful, absolutely amazing film, wonderful music from Hans Zimmer. And it features, it actually features, why am I putting my headphones on? It actually features a pipe organ. And the pipe organ was played by my old friend Roger, who was organist in the Temple Church in London. And this made sort of organ music very, 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 very mm, popular again around the world. And it was a proper, was that you? Oh, okay. Uh, it was a proper organ played in a proper church, recorded properly. Wonderful. And Roger had great fun doing the music for Interstellar. And of course, every single organist ever since has decided that the music from Interstellar has to be played on the organ. So I have found a copy of the music. It's actually it was arranged by some piano person 
I'm not going to tell you his name. It's, uh, I don't even have his name. It was a young, I think, Italian chap who arranged this for piano. And I got hold of the music and then I doctored it to turn it into an uh, organ arrangement. So the idea is I'm going to be playing my arrangement of someone else's arrangement of the main theme from Interstellar. But we're going to do that towards the end of the evening. So you've got to hang around, ladies and gentlemen. Here, go and tell all your friends that we're going to do Interstellar tonight and um, maybe get some folks in the chat. I beg your pardon, what did we do? What? When? Tonight? What? That's... That's fine, yeah. I think, Vanessa, I think Vanessa's been at the wine as well. What? 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 We wollen dann noch ein Video machen, eben weil wir Orgel mit Interstellar. Do, do we? Haben wir doch gesagt. Oh, okay. Apparently, according to the management, we're going to do... According to the management, we're going to go out and about and find an enormous organ somewhere and do a proper sort of feature, an Interstellar feature. Are we? First I've heard of it. Okay, so that's fine. Well, we're going to do that at some point in the near future. So that'll be fun. Anyway, wonderful. Are you drinking wine, Vanessa? No, she's not. Maybe no. she should. Vanessa doesn't drink at all. Mm. Which is very handy. <clears throat> More on that soon. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> um, Mr. John Barry. Now, we've had Henry Mancini this evening, who was a fantastic jazz musician. And Henry Mancini, of course, um, composed lots of wonderful film music in a jazzy style. Someone else who composed film music in a jazzy style was John Barry. And John Barry is perhaps most famous for, and we did, we've done an evening of this before already, but he's most famous for the music, of course, of James mm -hmm. Bond. And I think we'll actually use the same registrations we used for... Yes, we'll use the same registration. <laughs> Actually, we won't. We'll use the registrations from there. <clears throat> and then they go there, and then they, oh, they become very loud there. That's good. That makes sense. Um, James Bond. James Bond. The same registrations we had for um, um, the Pink Panther. That's the word I was looking for. Good heavens me. I'm still not... I'm still not back in the zone. That, that YouTube nonsense put me all out of kilter tonight. So anyway, here we go. Um, James Bond theme. I think you all know this. The most famous guitar solo of all time.
<laughs> Isn't that what well, I'm going to say? <laughs> Quite a lot tonight. It's wonderful. Um, someone's asking, oh, good heavens. I have, I'm, I'm sorry, I wouldn't know where to start pronouncing your name, but Mr. Nikeo or Nukeo, um, which sample set am I using? It's the Nancy sample set. Nancy, Nancy. Wonderful stuff. Um, big, snappy French organ. <laughs> which is perfect for big, snappy French sounds. And I think James Bond works rather nicely on that, don't you? The James Bond music is Oscar-winning music. Mm. And one of the best James Bond films of all time is obviously the one with Gert Frobe as the baddie. That would, of course, be... Oh, my goodness, there's too many pages here. What am I going to do? Um, obviously, Gert Frober as the baddie. That must be Goldfinger. La, 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 la. He's the man. The man with the Midas touch. Hold on. Is that... Oh, God, I can't see now. Uh, yeah, that must be right. So, let's, we're going to slide the music around. Are there any repeats here? No. Okay. Now, it's very difficult to find the music for Goldfinger. Very difficult indeed. Uh, actually, I'll stick with this. It's quite loud, but that's good. Um, it's quite difficult to find the music because it would appear to be heavily guarded and heavily copyrighted. Um, however, I have a choral score. Thank you, Julian. Julian just donated or bought a ticket. Thank you, Julian. Very kind of you. Um, sometimes it shows up on the screen here so I can see it and say thank you as well. So there you are. So if you fancy a mention, go get yourself a ticket. Um, anyway, yes, and the music to Goldfinger is incredibly well, like I said, incredibly well uh, guarded. And in the dim and distant past of my years back in Edinburgh, I remember I had a choral arrangement of this. And I dug, and I dug, and I dug, and I found my choral version of this. So it's actually a four-part choir version with a piano accompaniment that I am sort of transcribing into an organ arrangement spontaneously. Oh my goodness me. Yes, don't say I don't do work, folks. This is what it's all about. So here we go. Goldfinger, possibly the most famous thirds you will ever have heard. I was talking to Graham Twist about this recently. We were talking about not the circle of fifths. I was talking about using thirds, modulations in thirds, like Vaughan Williams would have done it. And Vaughan, if Vaughan Williams composed this, he would have done this as well. Yeah? Moving around in thirds, it's very exciting stuff. Um, Monsieur Messian did it as well with his... Um, all the... Um, no. Uh, uh, where does it go from there? That's it. That kind of stuff. It's the same kind of thing. Um, and John Barry, again, John Barry decided that that would be a good way of doing things as well. Very clever stuff. Did you know the words to Goldfinger were... Actually, no. Who wrote the words to Goldfinger? Do you know?
Goldfinger. Shoo-ba-doo-ba-doo. Are you singing in the background? Uh-oh. Oh no, Vanessa's messed up again. What did you do? Uh-oh. Steuerung Z. Z. What did you do? Do I want to know actually? She's good at doing that. Deleting things. John Williams is a magnificent composer of film music. John Williams is still around. He's about 108. That's not true. I think it's 128 or something. I don't know. But John Williams is still around. Very, very, very successful film composer. Um, obviously an incredibly, incredibly um, wealthy <laughs> film composer as well. He composed some of the most amazing film music of all time. Don't forget the Star Wars music is all John Williams. Superman. Harry Potter. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's have some music from Harry Potter, the legendary Hedwig's theme. Should you have an owl at home, let it out and set it free. You should not have owls at home.
Um, yeah, this is, that was Hedwig's theme, an arrangement of, I, that's an arrangement I just made up. Um, it's, um, it's difficult to find actual organ arrangements of this kind of music. So what I try to do is I find suitable piano scores. This is actually a very easy piano score. And then I, of course, listen to the original and then I amend it as I think necessary. So um, most of the music you heard tonight is sort of my spontaneously arranged version of a piano score of the music itself. Now, having said that, occasionally, from time to time, you do actually find good, really good uh, versions of music that, um, you know, arranged for the organ that's actually playable. And a long time ago, just after we did our, we did a film music spectacular a while ago, and after that, a member of the Gartrell gang said, I want you to get this book, Star Wars. 13 Intergalactic Arrangements for Organ. Music, John Williams, the Hal Leonard Company. And I don't think it names names of the people who did the arrangements, which I think is a terrible shame, because I think it would be rather nice to know who did this. Um, it's nobody we know, I know that much. Um, and there's some wonderful stuff in here, and I've taken two of the Star Wars things for tonight, um, just to um, let you enjoy hopefully um, the sounds of this kind of music on hold on that's not the one i wanted where is it there it is um the kind of music the kind of sounds you can have on an organ when you're playing film music and this is actually as it's arranged now hold on do i have a registration for this saved i think i do but i can't remember which one it was now did i call it star wars i didn't call it star wars did i did i call it may the force i didn't call it may the force what did i call it then I beg your pardon? Was spiel it? Gleich. What did I use? I used, I used some rather, I think actually I used. Uh, what did I use? I think I used. Um, uh, where did I put it? There it is. There it is. Click. There it is. I knew I, I knew I saved it somewhere. Sorry, people. My brain is not doing what it's supposed to do. That looks good. Let's just quickly add something to that for the end to make it a bit nicer. Uh, I think actually we can leave it at that. Maybe we'll add that. Okay. Quickly save that so I've got it ready for next time. Click. Off you trot. Right. May the force be with you. Spontaneous, as you can see. Um, this is that lovely sort of slightly more softer theme that you hear in the original Star Wars, A New Hope, the original Star Wars film. So that was, um, what did it, it was number four, wasn't it? Oh, you printed something for me. Vanessa just handed me some spontaneous music. This is going to be fun. Sorry, people. Um, I don't mean to uh, be rude, but we've got to do what's going on in the background here. Check this out. May the force be with you.
simple but effective. However, <laughs> if I dig around later in the book, we come up with this magnificent piece of music. <laughs> this is much more like it. Let's get some loud nonsense coming on here. I think we need uh, that one. I think we definitely need this. Actually, that might work. If we stick on that, oh no, hold on, let's stick on. Oh, that's too much, man. Would you mind leaving the room? Actually, I suppose we could start there. Yeah, that would do. Again, at the, from the first Star Wars film, back to the 1970s, um, a piece of music towards the end of the film, entitled The Throne Room and End Title. You may recognize this. This is where the fun begins. Who said something about a march? Yes. Gleis van der Rohe, you know what's coming. <laughs> We need more. We need more. We need to be louder. Just too much for any normal person. Let's look at this, people. There's a there's a part of this music in D flat minor. D flat minor, G flat minor. Why would you write it like that? Why not just write it F sharp minor, like any normal person? My goodness me. Wow. What a magnificent sound. The music of John Williams is indeed rather magnificent, don't you think? Now, Vanessa just handed me some music. And, oh, that's a fun one. Oh, I asked for horror music earlier, and this is what we got. However, this is definitely not 
horror music. Oh my goodness. Oh yes, this is more fun. Gleis van der you said here comes a march. Well, how about this? The, oops, this is probably one of the famous, most famous marches ever. This is sight reading, so let's see if what we can do with this. Uh, Oh my goodness, yes, I'm sure we can work this out. Tum, ta -tum. Ah, yes, 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 I know what we can do. Right, okay. Very spontaneous. This is Elmer Bernstein again. Uh, the wonderful Mr. Elmer Bernstein. Which registration shall we take for this? Actually, I think we might just go with these. And then start somewhere in the middle. I have, on every organ I have, I have some things set up as... I suppose I could use the crescendo pedal, couldn't I? Yes, I could. And then we could play around with that. Yeah, yeah, I like it, I like it. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure who requested this, so whoever you are, you're a genius, and I love you for doing it. Thank you very much indeed. Um, back to Elmer Bernstein and a wonderful piece of music, the main title, the main march from his amazing film, Great Escape. Oh yes, I like it. I like it a lot.
I beg pardon? From Paul Freeman. Who's that? Paul Freeman, can't you make that? No. Thanks for all the fish. So long and thanks for all the fish. So long and thanks for all the fish from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a very spontaneous, the great escape. Ha ha ha! Wonderful stuff. I do like that. I'm keeping that. That's good. Right, I promised it to you, and it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to do it. Spider Cam is making me dizzy. Is it? Hogan's Heroes. Oh, that's going back a bit as well. Right, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. My spontaneous. It's so spontaneous, I've got it in several different bits of paper. Um, Yay. Well, you can keep the one. Yeah, oh, Vanessa says this is her favorite piece of organ music at the moment. There you are. So, how about that? Where is it? Where is it? It's over there. Click. Now, kaboom. Yes, this is exciting stuff. Like I said, the music for Interstellar. This was organ music with an orchestra together, composed. Now, Hans Zimmer allegedly allegedly, um, chose to use the organ because it was throughout history until sort of the Industrial Revolution, the organ was the most complicated piece of machinery there ever had been, um, which I think is probably true, actually. Um, it's a wonderful piece of machinery. And this music, this music itself, it's a very um, sort of litany-like piece of music. Um, it's based, it's actually based around two things. Oops, try and get some registrations. Two notes, those two notes. And also, those three notes down in the bass as well. And that's basically it, yeah? And the whole piece, it's sort of, it's a variation on a simple, but repetitive theme. So it's like, it is like chanting a litany. It's like a Hare Krishna, if you want. It's that kind of thing. And it sort of, it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. Now, the music to Interstellar is, of course, endless. There are many parts to it. So what I've done is I've taken the main theme, just the main theme. So it ends rather abruptly, but don't worry about that because at some point, as Vanessa has already said, we're going to do an interstellar evening where we probably do the entire music <coughs> score for interstellar. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Um, but tonight, for the first time on live Gotch or Gang television, we're going to do the main theme from interstellar on this magnificent organ in Nancy Cathedral. I hope you like it. Yeah.
Like I said, that's the main theme. It carries on to do other things after that, but coming soon to a channel near you. It's fun. It's fun to do all that sort of meandering around. Good fun, isn't it? Good fun. Simple, but effective. And that's the way music should be. I love it. Rather good fun, isn't it? Ooh. Dominic Eckhart, wahrscheinlich hat Fraser diese Orgel heute genau für dieses Stück genommen. Ist die richtige Antwort. Dominic Eckhart just said, I probably chose that organ especially for that piece tonight. And that's true. When I was getting the program ready for tonight, I've been planning this program for a while. And when I was getting it ready, I, um, I decided, which organ am I going to use? Am I going to use a theater organ for the jazzy ones? Am I going to use maybe a Baroque organ for some fun things? And I thought, no, it needs to be, it needs to be an organ that has the quietest stops possible in the way this piece starts. You can, hear, you can hear how far away those pipes are. I've set the organ up differently as well, just for this as well. You can hear how far away those pipes are. It sounds like they're miles away in the church, which they are actually, I suppose, right at the top of the organ. Yeah? And then all the way to, all the way to, where is it? There it is. The end of the piece where it's, you know, all this kind of stuff, double pedals. <laughs> If you're looking at the screen there, you can see there are some black parts where I haven't chosen the stops, where I didn't choose that one, I didn't, obviously didn't choose that one, or that one, or even that one. There are some stops I didn't choose, and that's deliberate, because, like I say, the piece carries on and does something else. So you have to have a tiny little bit of something extra at some point. So that's, that was the reasoning behind this. So yes, there you are. So thank you very much. That, ladies and gentlemen, was interstellar. It's been a while coming, but there it was. Schon vorbei. I asked you for, let's keep these registrations, this is rather cute for this. I need you to snap your fingers, ladies and gentlemen, um, for the simple reason you all know this one. This, I rec right at the beginning this evening, I said, let's do some horror music. I didn't choose any horror music, so I asked you to choose some horror music. And the only thing that appeared, for some bizarre reason, was this. Snap your fingers at the right point. <laughs> that was a quick and a quick and fun uh, piece of music. The Adams Family theme. That was composed by someone called, can I read that right? Vic Mizzy. Imagine being called Vic Mizzy. If you're called Vic Mizzy, you have to write things like the Adams Family. Qu'est-ce What's this? Oh, okay. 
It's a short version of it, but oh, I'm sure we can. <gasps> we can do this on this organ. <laughs> we like spontaneity, don't we? Oh, I said, yes, I said we'd have something else by Henry Mancini, and here it is. Um, we need a different registration for this, though. Hold on. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Yes, we could, I suppose, couldn't we? What registration are we going to use for this? Hold on, give me two seconds while I use my brain to do something. I don't have a brain tonight for some reason. Oh, hold on, what's that? What's that? Don't know what that is. Well, that looks all right. Does it get bigger? It sort of does. Yeah, we go up to number nine. Okay, that might work. I think if we get rid of that and add that and that, that might work. Uh, yes, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'm busy thinking to myself in the background. It's the middle of festival time, so tonight is concert number two of our festival. Here is the concert program for the rest. Tomorrow evening, assuming uh, YouTube lets us, uh, we will have At The Jazz Band Ball. Tomorrow night is going to be a night of jazzy music at the organ. We're going to be celebrating everything from ragtime through Dixie and uh, classical jazz. I call it classic jazz because that's you know what it should really be called. Uh, jazz of the older days, through the swing era, the Count Basies and Duke Ellingtons of this world, to the 40s, 50s, 60s, and slightly more modern jazz. There will be some Dave Brubeck in there. There will be some funky jazz in there. There will be all sorts of goodies. So do join us tomorrow night for At The Jazz Band Ball. On Monday night, my goodness me, I'm a glutton for punishment, a Bach Bonanza, music by the Bach family and music for the Bach family. That's going to be a difficult one for me, but Monday night is going to be a Bach Bonanza. Do join us for that, if nothing else, to see how much I make a mess of things, <laughs> which is always good fun. On Tuesday night, we're having a silent film night once again. And uh, yes, we're still, if you have ideas for that, so I already have an idea for the silent film, but maybe you have a specific silent film you would like me to accompany. Let me know in the usual way gang at gauchor.de of course and then ladies and gentlemen on wednesday night we will be wrapping things up and closing the festival um, and i do i beg your pardon oh and oh, apparently i should play a couple of disney things as well well we did during the last festival we did a disney night remember yeah. it was all disney yeah, we love disney, disney. yes we love disney we all love disney don't we Oh, Vanessa's taking over here in the background. Who wants? Uh, is that? I think we can move the picture away now, can't we? Um, who wants? Who wants Disney played in the final evening on Wednesday night? What do you think? Good idea. Thumbs up if you want Disney on the final evening on Wednesday night. Final night of our um, final evening of our wonderful festival. festival. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, a spontaneous version of a piece of music from Henry Mancini. And it's the, possibly the only piece of music that was actually designed to be and sound like, wait for it, Boogie Woogie on the organ. It is, it's actual Boogie Woogie on an organ. It is, it really seriously is. It sounds something like this.
That, ladies and gentlemen, has pretty much summed up this evening's music from the films. And of course, we're going to close off with something else. And we're going to close off with a piece of music for you to sing along to and whistle along to. And whistle along to. You might know what it is. Someone's mentioned it already this evening um, out there. Um, certain films have always come up with certain pieces of music that have managed to sort of remain international forever. And 40 odd, or probably almost 50 years ago now, um, a group of eccentric young students got together and started making all sorts of comedy films and television programs. And one of their films was rather controversial back in the day, uh, banned in various places around the world. But the ending of that film has become one of the most iconic pieces of music ever. And people sing it all the time and people use it all the time it's been used in all sorts of all sorts of i want to start there and go up to no, i want to start there and do that yeah that looks good um and it's been used in all sorts of things and sometimes when the world is falling apart and everything is going the wrong way nothing seems to work the way you want this piece of music always seems to crop up and suddenly everyone starts feeling better again. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to finish off the concert with this piece of music. I'm not going to tell you what it is, I'm just going to start playing it. And I would, oh, some of you have already got it. <laughs> and it's, um, it's always a pleasure to come out and play these concerts for you. And we love playing these concerts for you. We will continue to do it for as long as we possibly can. Vanessa loves it in the background. Vanessa is the management. Vanessa is officially part of the Garchow Gang team. Um, and uh, has, you know, has been doing this since we started with the live streams and the live streams have become such a popular part of the Garchow Gang. Now, if you are a member of the Patreon Garchow Gang, tonight is the first Saturday in the new month, so you would surely be expecting a tuba. Do we have a tuba in this organ? No, we don't, but let's do a tuba. You would be expecting a tuba concert, but the tuba concert will come next Saturday. I told you that before, but just in case you were wondering, we will be doing a two-bar concert next week. If you're a two-bar member, um, the idea of two-bar membership is that it helps, it's, you know, it's a regular sort of extra for us to help us plan, and as, as, as a thank you for that, you get an extra special concert just for two-bar members. That's the idea. So, um, I think Vanessa has, <laughs> Vanessa, <laughs> he is a naughty boy. Yes, thank you very much, Yellowbird Nest. He is indeed a naughty boy. Yeah, he's a naughty boy. That's um, Brian's mum says that. Oh, he's a naughty boy. That kind of, you don't know the film. Vanessa doesn't know the film. Can you believe Vanessa doesn't know the film? Oh, I think v Vanessa was brought up in a bubble. I think Vanessa doesn't know any of this kind of stuff. It's been visited afterwards. Yes, she was brought up in a very, very uh, sheltered environment. I think that's a nice way to say it. Um, yes. He's been a very naughty boy. Terry Jones at his finest. Anyway, before I start doing Monty Python impressions all night, I think it's time to stop. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for chipping in and buying some tickets. Thank you for giving the video a thumbs up on the way past. Thank you for just simply being there. You're all rather wonderful indeed. And if things in life are bad, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do it, but you know how it works. You know how it works. Always look on the bright side of life. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. See you tomorrow for a jazz band ball.